Hi, and welcome back to part three. In this session, we're going to look at the enhancements to parameters and schedules in Revit 2018. The first thing we're going to look at is parameters associated to model groups. Here I've already created some shared parameters that I'm going to apply to model groups. I'm going to add group name and I'm going to make this a type. I'm going to group this parameter under data. and find the category model groups. Press OK. I'm now going to add another shared parameter, which is going to be an instance parameter. This is going to create a parameter with group ID, and it's going to vary between group instances. I'm going to again put that into data and I'm going to use the category model groups. Now I have two parameters, one for type and one for instance. So if I now edit the type of the group and add its name, in this case type B, I can then go in and add the naming of the group types to the other types that I have in this project. So I'm just going to go and add type A. And then do the same for type C. This will enable me to filter on group name when making a schedule. So let's go ahead and build a model group schedule. I'm going to choose new schedules. I'm going to go down and find my model groups. Now I'm going to add my group name, group ID, the reference level that the groups is on. And I could, if I wanted to add my type, Let's say OK to that. So now I can see the names of my groups. I can see the group ID which I've added. And I can see which level the group is on. Having a type parameter on the model group is really useful. I'm going to show you why that is. I'm just going to go to my site plan and I'm going to take one of the trees and I'm going to simply make a, a an array. Now, since the array is actually a group, an array group, this is going to come into my schedule as an array group. Now in Revit, we can't filter on type. What we can filter on is a parameter, um, a type parameter, and in this case, the group name. And if I say the group name is greater than and leave this blank, it will filter out those uh, array types. Now, the schedule is also really useful for finding your groups in your model. So, of course, you can go to highlight model and find where the group is. Now I can see which level my group's on and which house it belongs to. I can also enter the instance parameters of this group here. This is a type B. I could choose from my list to make my typing quicker. And then I can add level zero to this. So now my schedule is updated. I have found some small anomalies with this. If I wanted to change this type, sometimes it's not possible to choose from the list. I have also found that occasionally 
I can't type into this instance parameter. Let's just choose that for the time being. See, for some reason I can't change it. I don't know if this is because the group is not editable or what. See, I can't change it. But if I go into and highlight the model, close, then I can go into the instance parameter B house three level two. Then it seems I'm able to edit the instance. Not a big issue, just be aware of it. Now I'm going to open my interior project. This is coming from the collaboration for Revit server. It's called interior and I'm going to open. In previous versions of Revit, we were not able to open linked files in the same session. But in the latest versions, 2018, we can link a Revit project and have it open in the same session without having to open two sessions. I'm now going to show you how you get the data from the linked file into a model group schedule. So here I'm going to create a schedule again of the model groups notice here that I only have the uh, standard parameters available so I can have my type my level as before and I can see that I only have the array groups which are available in this in this project. If I want to see the the groups from the linked project, I have to go back to the fields and include elements from linked files. Now I'm able to see my office types A B C but I obviously can't see the uh, parameters which I added to those. If I go to my parameter, project parameters and I add the shared parameters which I had um, from the other project, group ID instance, and set it up in the same way, model groups. I'm going to put this under data again, that's mainly just to so that we can uh, identify them easier for this purpose. If I also add the other parameter that we used, group name, and this one was a type, and I'm also going to put that under data for ease of finding it again. So if I add those, now they're available to me in the schedule. Now I can see the information coming through from the linked file. So in conclusion, the ability to create custom parameters for your groups and create schedules is going to make working with multiple instances of groups on large projects really powerful. We can now count the number of groups we have. We can also access that information in linked files.